Hi, I'm Steve Wood, the Vice President of Product Management uh, at Salesforce, and I'm just going to talk you through the basics of just getting started with Visual Workflow. Just the kind of just the bare bones, how do I get access to it, where do I find it, how do I get going with the designer, um, and basically how do I you know build it something very, very basic and upload it into the system. So let me just show you that. So let's start with um, where do I find it. So if you go to your setup area and expand out your create workflow and approvals and what you'll see is that the feature is down here called flows and if you select that then you'll basically see the home screen for uh, the flows feature so this is visual workflow so a couple of things to note here if you don't have flows in your workflow and approvals area it means that it needs to be provisioned it is an add-on feature so speak to your account executive about that um, if, uh, but th that's actually where the feature should be so if it's not there it means it hasn't been provisioned so the next piece is getting the designer, the desktop designer. So it's still a desktop designer, which means it needs to be downloaded. And you can download it directly from the setup area here. So I'll do that now. Um, it's an executable file. It does uh, run, it's only uh, Windows um, compatible at the moment. So if you're running a Mac, you'll need to run it in a virtual machine. Um, so just download that file now. Okay, so once the file is downloaded, all we need to do next is just launch it. This is a standard process. I'm using Chrome. It may be slightly different if you're using um, Safari or Internet Explorer. Uh, click Run to run the actual installation. I'm also running uh, Windows XP. If you're running Vista, there may be some slight variations here. But essentially, the installation process is very standard uh, for any piece of software. There's no license keys required. There's no activation. It's just simply an installation show. So just walk through the wizard and it'll, it'll guide you through. Okay, so this is the first screen of the installation. All you need to do here is click Next. Um, if you feel like changing the directory that it's installed in, feel free. I'm not going to change it. Um, again, uh, if you feel like changing the name, uh, 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 more than uh, happy to do that. Uh, I'm just going to click Next again. And then I'm going to click Next again, saying that I want the flow files. And again, you can just configure whether or not you want it on your desktop or quick icon. I'm just going to click Next and accept those changes. And that is basically it. The rest, it'll just install. OK, so once the installation is finished, you'll just get this final dialog. Uh, click Finish, and it will launch the designer for you. And that is basically how you install the desktop software. It's that straightforward. Um, if you're wondering where it exists, it's simply in your program menu. Um, under force.com flow and the designer link there. So it's it's uh, always available there on your desktop. Um, and I'll just start up the designer software now. So let's just build out a very um, simple um, example that just really just illustrates the round trip. I'm not going to show anything fancy here. So there's a couple of things you should do when you first get the software installed. First thing you should do is link with your Salesforce account. So I'll just do that now. Under options and settings, you'll find your salesforce.com settings under this uh, salesforce.com settings tab. Um, and in there, just put in your credentials for the org that you're developing against. So if you're maybe working in a sandbox, put in your sandbox details here. If you're working on your developer org, you can put your details in there. Um, your flows are by no means tied to that account. This, these are just the settings for the designer. If you create a flow in one org and then you want to put it into another org, um, you can just upload it to any org you like. The only thing that needs to be there is the dependent fields or any uh, custom fields you may have or any um, Apex code you may be working with or whatever. It also needs to be in that other org. But the flow itself is not tied to an org. So you put your credentials in here, you know, username, password, and security token. If you have one, you can test your connection as well just to make sure that it is, in fact, actually connecting to the org. Um, initially, that can take a couple seconds just to... Uh, just while it warms up, it's just got to kind of open up the connection and connect over to Salesforce. You may find it takes a few seconds. Um, you should hopefully see a connection successful screen, which says you are now kind of linked and able to work against the org. Just click OK. And OK. And those settings will stay with the designer when you close it. You only need to do that once. Um, even when you update the designer, the settings will remain as well. So, OK. So let's just create a very, very quick flow. I'm going to create something that effectively just does a lookup. Um, from some leads records um, and uh, you know just a few screens basically uh, uh, so I'll show you that now so first thing we do is create a new flow so I'll click on the new flow link and I'll give the flow a, a unique name so I'll call it lead um, flow now the unique name does need to be unique for each flow so if you have uh, the, you, if you reuse the same name it will overwrite uh, 
the other flow. So the, the name is how the system, how a Salesforce will identify this as a unique flow. So if you re repeat the name, it means it'll think it's the same as the as, as another one that already exists. So I'll put in a lead flow. Okay, and now we can just basically start drawing. So first thing I'm going to do in my lead lookup, all I'm going to basically do is ask maybe somebody what their surname is, and then I'm going to look up the list of leads in the system that match that uh, surname. So we'll try that. So first thing is a question. And again, this is just to give you some, some basics. I'm not really sort of training you on how to build flows, just to give you a sense of maybe some of the characteristics here. So uh, surname, and uh, please provide your surname. This is the information that will be presented to the user. Uh, so I'll say that they have to provide an input, surname, that's text, and we're done. So that's question number one. Now I'm going to add, um, after this question, I'm going to want to show a list of choices that match that, having a list of leads. So I'm going to first create a data source. And a data source basically allows me to get data from my Salesforce org and incorporate that into my flow. So in this case, because I want to get the list from the leads object, my data source is going to be uh, the lead object. So it's a very straightforward wizard. I'll just walk you through it. So I'm going to click on, so I created a new data source. I'm now going to assign it, which is basically I'm going to, link it to the lead object. So I click next and then I just simply find my lead object. You'll see it's got all the objects in your Salesforce org here. I'm particularly just interested in the lead object so I'll select that one and next and finish. So now basically I have a link now to the lead object and I can now use it in my flow. So I'll do that. Okay so I'm now going to create another question and I'm going to say uh, uh, lead selection. But uh, please select, select, oops, select your lead. Um, that's all I'm going to put there. And then now I'm going to use what's called a choice lookup. And that allows me to get the list of records from Salesforce, bring them in as a list presented to the user. So here we are choice lookup. Uh, I'm going to call this lead list. Which so we're going to use our lead source to say that's where we're going to get our leads from. I'm going to show the user the name column. So that will be the column that they see as when they want to select the actual lead. If you wanted to have uh, um, show more than one column that gets presented to the user, you could use a formula field here, like a text formula field. So I'm just going to have the, the name. And I'm going to filter it by saying that basically the last name in the lead must contain the surname that was entered for the first question. Click OK and OK. And we'll just connect these up. So first question surname, then leads to the lead selection question, which gives us this list. And then we'll just send the user to a final screen, which is just a thank you. That's all we're going to do. There's obviously a lot more you can do in Flow, but let's just uh, just stick with that. So there we have it. That's a basic flow, built-in visual workflow, and I will now just try running it just to see if it works, and then we'll deploy it. So uh, let me just save it first. So uh, lead flow is the name. Okay, and I'm going to just right-click and run. And you'll see that this is what the end user will see. Obviously, this is just a test uh, environment, so we're just really just showing you the end. It's very plain. This hasn't been branded in any way whatsoever. So you can just so you know when it gets to put up to Salesforce, it'll look much different. And certainly, if you put some themes on it based on Visual Force, you can make it look really quite quite nice. So I'll put in uh, wood next. Okay, and you'll see it's actually found three leads uh, repeated. One is repeated, obviously. I can just select one, and then next. So there you go. A list of lead objects coming from the system, filtered based on some information we provided in the flow. That is all I'll show you, and now let's just focus on getting it up into Salesforce and showing you how that process works. So I've saved it. We're good. We're saying we're happy with it. We've uh, That's all we needed to do. Let's deploy it to Salesforce. So we go back to our Salesforce account, and on our Flows page, you'll notice that there's an upload link right here. So I just click on Upload, and I click on Choose File, and then Find my lead flow file that I just created for you which is here, click OK, and then Upload. Now if there's any issues with the flow, uh, the uh, Visual Workflow um, validation will kick in and tell us if there's any problems. 
So I'm hoping that it looks good. Yep, so it's fine. It's gone up and it is successfully uploaded. Um, now the URL to link us directly to this flow is there. Um, and we can activate it to make it live. So if we want to actually make it so something that uh, our end users can consume, we can activate it. But for now, let's just run it. So let's just run it directly from uh, the admin area so we can just test it out. So we don't need to do anything. We don't need to code anything. We don't need to do any visual force. Everything, this all just comes for free. So it is now running natively on the platform uh, using the standard Salesforce look and feel. I didn't need to do any work in order to do that. The, the, so I can just run it here. So I'll just put in wood, click next. Um, it's going to give me back my list. So you can see we've got the list of leads here. Select one, and then we're finished. So basically, that is the process of getting um, a flow created, um, linked to your Salesforce account, and uploaded into the system and deployed. That's basically it. If we're now ready to basically use it within Salesforce, it's just a link. So all you need to do is put that link under a web tab, behind a button, uh, within a site, within customer portal, uh, you know, whatever you like. It is just a standard uh, hyperlink. Um, that's all you need to know. And you just all you need to do really to deploy is just click on activate and it becomes now kind of publicly available. So it's not just available to the admin anymore, it's now available to all our end users. And that is it. So if you want to build a flow, it's as simple as that. And we obviously have so many, uh, loads of templates are gonna be coming out shortly and um, some more demos to show you guys. All right, thank you.